The cells of the body not only face the danger of invading bacteria, viruses, and the spread of cancer cells, it also faces the danger of the inappropriate action of immune cells, which might indiscriminately attack cells of the body and cause an autoimmune disease. To address the second concern, cells of the immune system need to be activated by other cells of the immune system. And this allows for a checks and balances approach. If a B lymphocyte were to uh, react against self or a cytotoxic T cell were to react against self, they would not have a negative effect on the body if they needed the permission of, say, a T helper cell before they could be activated. And so T helper cells are vital as permission givers. Without the cytokine local hormones that they produce, the B cells do not produce the plasma cells, which would produce the antibodies against potential targets, nor would the cytotoxic T cells destroy cells uh, which they have engaged. In the same way, T helper cells need to receive permission before they can be activated and then stimulate other parts of the immune system. Antigen presenting cells such as dendritic cells, macrophages, and B lymphocytes ingest foreign antigens, process them, and then attach peptides to MHC2 proteins which then bring these foreign antigens to the cell surface. The T lymphocytes see that the MHC2 proteins of an immune cell have bound an antigen, and then the antigen-presenting cell can stimulate the T helper cell with interleukin. Thus, the T helper cell is now activated, and it can then activate other components of the immune system, such as the B lymphocytes and cytotoxic T cells. And so not only are the T helper cells required to give permission to other components of the immune system, T helper cells must receive permission by antigen-presenting cells before they can be activated.